Hey, so um, so this is Search for 19, and I am uh, Sam Richards. Uh, you can call me Sam. You can call me Dr. Sam. You can Richards. You can call me whatever you want. doesn't really matter, but Sam is fine. And uh, I think we're going to have a good semester. Um, lots of uh, interesting things going on that we'll bring into this classroom. And uh, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And what, I'm not going to introduce you to a lot of folks. There's a lot. There's a huge team that's part of uh, Social 19, and so I, I, I I'm not going to do any introductions today. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the class, and a little about me, so you have a sense of where I'm coming from. And then we're going to do a, a, a kind of have a class in a way, like do do a. A, um, a case study, as as we call them. So, I always we always title the classes something. Um, every class is different, and so uh, it's always been different. I, I really we never do the same thing twice, and so we just come up with these titles that are unique on on our on our channel. So uh, anyway, we're calling this one Another Adventure Begins. And I don't know if it's an adventure more for you or for me. I, I feel like it's more always more for me. But in any case, um, so welcome. All right, let's go. Um, so first things first, uh, definitely no, no, there are only some people in, the, there are four people over here in the front who have laptops open. They're, they're part of our team. Otherwise, you can't, you don't need a laptop. You, and, and you're going to be happy about this because you don't have to take notes in here. There's, there's nothing. All you have to do in here is think. And I mean, how awesome is that? We're in college, right? And all you have to do is think. You don't have to memorize. You don't have to be stressed. You don't have to wonder, am I, good? Am I not understanding? And what do I need to know for the test? What do, how do I get an A in the class? What do I have to do? N none of that. You don't, nothing. So all you have to do is come in here. Just enjoy yourself, right? Now, school uh, is, generally speaking, not a place that most of us associate with enjoyment um, because... It's, it's not what it is. It could be like that. Like those of you who maybe went to friend schools or Montessori schools or, you know, something like that. But uh, otherwise, it's not what we usually associate with enjoyment. It's what we associate with fear and feelings of inadequacy and, you know, all this kind of negative stuff. Um, but, uh, but not in here, man. So just no laptops and, and no phones. Because here's the problem. It, the the, the true I used to allow phones in class right because we would we would do lots of uh, you know in class conversations on the phones right like we we had a really for a while we had a really active Twitter uh, hashtag going I guess it's called X now an X hashtag and so people in class were like we're in conversation with each other over that um, and so a lot of people you either had your phone out participating or you had your phone out to seeing what other people were doing or saying. Um, but the problem is, uh, and so for me, I always felt like it, it, even having your phone out is cool. Like it's a challenge for me. I just have to be more into, I have to make the class more interesting than what you can find on your phone. But the problem is uh, there's a lot of really interesting things on your phone. And, and I can't really measure up to that. Not to mention the fact that uh, you know, you got people watching like FIFA, soccer, football, people watching porn, I don't know, whatever. I can't compete with those two things, you know what I mean? So uh, it, so anyway, um, there's just no phones. Like, it'll be interesting enough that you don't really need your phone. You got to pop your phone out because you got to, you know, email your friend and I don't know, maybe they're like going to New Jersey to pick up some stash or something. Like, you got to tell them what you want. Like, okay, that's cool, whatever. But uh, yeah, you got to text your parents, tell them what time you're going to be home or 
the, yeah, you're not hungover today or whatever the case is, but uh, yeah, just don't, just keep, keep your phones away, man. Okay, it's good. Um, because here's the other side. The class is much more interesting when w- those of us up here are not distracted. When I say those of us, I mean me and you, those of you who come up to the front and volunteer. So it's, it's just far more interesting when we're not distracted. Okay, all right, Matt. Um, okay, so that's me in 1991 when I first started teaching this class. So obviously... Uh, Obviously, I look different. That it happens to the best. <laughs> and uh, um, those were different times. Let me just say, uh, I, I started. I came. I had been living in, uh, in, in Ecuador. Uh, I spent five years going back and forth to South to Latin America. Um, I'd been living in Ecuador doing research and uh, from really kind of 85 to, to, to 90, but in 89 and 90, I spent the whole year there, the entire year. And, uh, and I came here. Um, just kind of by accident, because my girlfriend at the time, who was, uh, she's now my wife, but or I'm her husband, or whatever. She's, you know, we, I don't, I don't, my wife, like, yeah, my wife, <laughs> but whatever, you know, she, she, she's that person. Um, she came here for grad school, and so I just came up here on a, on a whim, because uh, I'm like, I want, we wanted to live in sin together. So, uh, and I started teaching at Penn State, just like one class and uh, per semester for the first year. And then the second year in, in 91 is when I started teaching Social 119, um, largely because they didn't have anyone else to teach it and anyone else who wanted to teach it. And, uh, and I said, yeah, all right, well, I'll, I'll do Social 119. It's, good. it's cool. Um, and then I always thought I would leave. And because, you know, I, whatever. I just didn't think I would stay here um, at Penn State. And I ended up. I, I pause a lot because I try to decide if I want to tell you a story or not. Um, I'll tell you a story, man. Uh, so in the academy, what, what we do is, we, you know, we, when you go to graduate school, if you want to get a job as a professor at a place like this, you know, you build up a resume, or we call it a vita, and um, you got to have all your publications and your grants and all that kind of stuff, right? So I spent my grad school doing that, and, you know, I came here to write my dissertation, and then I was writing a book. And the book, my dissertation was the book, and then it was going to be a book. And so I spent a lot of time working on it in like 92, 93. And, uh, and, it, and I sent it off to the number one publishing house in, in sociology. And I've never told this story in this class. It's wild. Uh, I just, whatever, they had this series, and I just was like the top publishing house, man. And I just sent it off, some chapters off to them, and I said hey, what do you think about this book for this particular series? And they wrote back and they said, oh, that book would be perfect. Now, for a young dude who looks like that, to get a book published at like the beginning of my career at this publishing house was just like kind of make my career. I would just be like, okay, I'm ready to rock and roll, right? In the, in the world, whatever the career is, but you know how it goes, right? So I work on it for about six months, eight months. Man, I rewrite, I do all the things they asked me to do. And I... Uh, Sent it off to them. And six weeks later, this is before the internet, right? Six weeks later, I get a letter back, and I'm like, ah, oh, here's the letter. And the letter says, ah, we're not interested. After I spent so much time, and I didn't send it to anywhere else. So I called my wife on the phone. So immediately, I just felt these tears, right? 
I'm like, whoa, what are those tears? And I call my wife on the phone. I was in my office. It was summertime here. And I said, I'm done. She said, what do you mean you're done? I said, I'm not living my life for other people. I'm done. And the tears were tears of joy. That, so imagine that dude take the glasses off, like just have these tears to say, I'm not living for other people. I'm not going to just bust my life away. I don't know, like toss it away, trying to jump through hoops. And they have the option, they can just change the hoops and maybe I'm just not good enough or I, I'm not jumping through the hoops in the way that they want or whatever the case is. They can just change them. I mean, stride. I'm like, I'm not living like that because I don't need to live like that because Frankly speaking, I smoked enough pot in my life to know that, well, this is to those of you who have smoked pot. It, shit like that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. And so I was like, oh, all right. And so that was it. I took the book. It was sitting in my, on my shelf, right? It was sitting on my shelf, ready to send off to them all the pages. I put it on this other shelf, and it's still sitting there 30 years later. Haven't touched it. Never sent it anywhere else. And I got off what we call it, like the tenure track and stuff. I got off all that. I said, yeah, man, I'm just going to live year by year. I don't really care. I'm just going to live. We don't care. So that's how we've lived since then. It's just like whatever happens, happens. It's all good. And uh, awesome. So anyway... And so I, I just never left here. We always thought we would leave, and we never did. And somehow we're just, I'm, you know, just doing some, It's fun. You know, it's fun. I really like what, what I, like, I like it. It's really interesting. Um, okay, there's that story. Right. Never told it before. All right, man. Uh, okay, so that's me. Um, this is, I'm a little bit of an iconoclast. Okay, so that's my dad, who is in that picture is younger than I am now. I'm 62. He was probably maybe 61 in that picture. 60. He looks old. Why do people in the past always look so old now? Uh, so, Um, so, uh, the thing is my parents who were older when I, my mom was 45 when I was born, uh, they, they didn't care. So I'm dressed in pink, right? So, you know, pink is for little girls, right? I mean, it's not really pink used to be the color for boys, by the way, in the beginning of the 19th of the 20th century. Pink was the color for boys, and blue was the color for girls, and then somehow it got switched. And now, I mean, now we're all so gender fluid that it doesn't really matter, I suppose. But, uh, and that's my doll. So my parents were cool, whatever. You know, you have pink, you have a doll, it's all good, it doesn't really matter, right? So my whole life, I've been living outside the box. From a very young age, I, I was allowed to be outside the box, meaning I didn't have to follow the the rules of sociological conduct that are pretty, that are more typical. Well, so my father died, that dude right there, died in 1970 when I was nine and a half. And then I was really on my own. I, I, I really raised myself. So he was really into school and math and science and all of that. We were working class, by the way. So, um, yeah, yeah, I grew up in the working class, man. Uh, so I, um, raised myself and like, I started working full time when I was 14. I started working. I had a job when I was 11, working full time when I was 14 and, you know, the kind of stuff, you know, cause I had to, cause my mom was trying to survive and, uh, school was a place where I just want to have fun with my friends, but I never took grades seriously. Like, why would I? Because I didn't have to, because I had nobody, no one ever looked at my, once he died, no one ever looked at my grades to say like, oh, let me see how you did this year. 
It's like, did you pass? Did you not? No one. I, I don't ever remember my mom or anyone ever looking at my grades. I would just get my grades and look at them, and they meant nothing to me, like nothing at all. I would just take them home and do whatever, and that was it, right? And, but I loved to read. Like, I would go to the library. My neighbor would take me to the library, and I'd get a stack of books like this. And then in three weeks' time, I would just, like, you know, consume the books, and I would go back and get more. And I used to like to read. In fact, in high school, I would skip class because class just sucked. And I would just go down to the library. Well, first, I'd often go out to the railroad tracks and, you know. Uh, and then I'd go down to the library, and I would just hide in the back of the library and read books, you know. And I was like an athlete and I would do all sorts of things, but that was my, like my thing. So uh, I never had my soul crushed by school. Like my guess is many of you probably have. Like, you know, you're consumed with getting good grades and getting a job and doing this and getting into grad school, doing whatever you're supposed to do. Because, you know, because you don't know. Because, you know, you have to die to realize what life is all about to come back. And like, that's kind of a hard thing to do, uh, to realize that it just really doesn't matter. But nonetheless, uh, and then, and, and so that's my beginning of my life, okay? School's not really important. I'm just, school is a place to have fun and a place to find books that I could read, all right? So then, because you gotta be wondering how, how did I get here, right? So I went to college, but when I started college, I was working full-time, and I was a musician. So I started playing drums when I was 12. We were always playing in bands, um, and I was, I was playing in bands my first couple years of college, too, like throughout. And we'd play in bars and clubs and stuff, and then, you know, I'd get home late. And I, so at the end of two and a half years of college, I was halfway through my freshman year because I would start so many – I'd start with a full load, and then I would just stop going to class. And, uh, and, you know, it's just, I don't know, whatever, it's how it was. Um, but college was really inexpensive back then, right? Like in the summertime, I could work for six weeks. I was a house painter in the summer in those years. And I could work for six weeks, and I could pay my entire year's tui tuition. So anyway, the end of two, two years, uh, I was a freshman, like kind of, and my GPA was like 1.7 or something, I don't know. And... Uh, and then I transferred to a two-year college because I thought, like, ah, I'm never going to get a college degree. I went to University of Toledo, which I got in because they had to let, they let everybody in. So, uh, and I transferred to a two-year college because I thought, well, maybe I'll just try to get a two-year degree. It was a degree in business management or something. I, I don't know. Because I was going to, I thought I'd start, I had a painting company at the time. And I thought, well, maybe I'll expand this out, you know. Uh, I stopped going to my classes except one. And I show up, and I'm walking down the hallway, and I tell you this story, because it's like, this is how life can change on a dime, okay? Life changes on a dime. Your lives have already changed on a dime. In fact, you know, you, you, you will look back on your life, and you will, there will be so many things that happened to you that were fundamentally consequential as a result of meeting a random chance occurrence that happened. And it's, that's what's so cool about being my age is you get to see all those really fascinating things. But anyway, I'm walking down the hall. I see the library, and I, I can go to class, which is just dreadfully boring, and, or I can go to the library. So I go in the library, and, I, and I'm perusing the, 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 you know, the shelves and stuff, and I see this magazine or like a journal on uh, prisons, and so I take the journal and I start looking at it. And it was about reform in prison. So I, I sit down and I'm like, and I just start leafing through it. Because, you know, this is me. I'm always, I'm, I'm endlessly curious. Curious mind, right? Survive formal education because I didn't take formal education seriously. So I've always had a curious mind. So I'm reading it and I go like, oh, damn, that's, Damn, that sounds really cool about working with prisoners inside of a prison. So I go to the phone, you know, it's like right here, right near me, and I pick up the phone and I hit the operator and I call the social work and sociology department and say, hey, can I talk to somebody about transferring over? And so I did. I went over to the main campus. I talked to someone. They signed me up for classes, sociology classes, 
the next semester, the winter quarter, actually. And that was it, man. I never looked back. Like I, I quit my, I quit working full time. I quit playing music. I just gave, gave up everything. And I became a student, full-time student. Huh? Did nothing but just take in as much as I can in a more formal way. In my first quarter, I took four classes. I got two C's and two D's. Working my arse off, man. Two C's and two D's. I'm like, damn, I got a long way to go. Because I didn't know how to study. You know, like I didn't know how this thing worked. I could read, but I didn't know how to study. And then I just kept, I stayed at it because it was so fascinating. I, I just loved every second of it. And then I never looked back. And then here I am. That's how I got here. So that's my journey, man. So some of us don't start by being like really great students or whatever. Some of us start with curiosity. And, I, and I'm still really curious. Am I right, bro? Um, and here's, here's what you need to know about that. Uh, um, I have the curiosity. This is really important for what we're going to do in this class and what I'm going to demonstrate in a little bit. We're going to do a case study. I have the curiosity of, of, that, of that little kid that I never stop asking questions. So I can be in any situation. I can meet anybody from any occupation or any job, wherever it might be. And the moment I have get something about them, I'll just pepper them with questions because Everything is just fascinating to me. I'm a sociologist, right? So anything dealing with human beings, but kind of really anything at all, it doesn't really matter, right? This is a, you know, once you get into the world of engineering and, you know, chemistry and a lot of things, it's like, you got to, physics, you got to have, like, I love all that, but you got to have a certain base knowledge to really be able to go deeper into it. Um, but I just don't stop asking questions. So here's, so we're going to, throughout the semester, we're going to demonstrate that. Okay, and uh, and I'm gonna we're gonna do these case studies, meaning that we'll have volunteers come up, and you know we'll do things, and I'll ask you questions, and you'll ask questions, and we'll talk about things, and like, and with a childlike curiosity, and without a sense that there's right and wrong, and without a sense that we know what the answers are, and so now mind you, uh, for me, obviously, I, I've been in this. Industry in this industry. <laughs> I've been in this corporate environment. It's a, it is a corporate environment, man. <laughs> corporate environment. I've been in it for a long time. I've traveled all over. I've lived abroad. I've traveled all over the world. I don't know. Many, many countries. I don't know. Who knows? 50, maybe. I don't know. Uh, a lot of times I'm going to ask questions, and, and my job is to ask questions with deep curiosity for you. I'm asking questions for you, not questions for me. Like, I might ask questions I already know the answers to lots of things. Well, the answers, I don't know what the answers are. But anyway, so I, it will, I'll just, we'll just deal with that when we get to it, okay? Um, here's the other thing. Wait, does anybody have a question? By the way, did, did you feel like you want to ask? Dude, Leah, is there, is there any, are there any questions on the stream? We got now. Oh, damn. Okay, hang on. Yeah, we'll do that. Dude, you have a question? Do you have a, yeah. I tell, okay. Yosea, Yosea, listen, wait, are we on? Yos, Yosea, Yosia, maybe? Yosia? We'll, get, I'll answer, we'll answer that question. We'll talk about that. Not today. That's actually a really cool question. Uh, bro, you're on, man. So what are those beads, like, used for? Like, what's the significance what behind those? Yeah. Uh, these are actually, dude, where are you from, bro? Where are you from? Where? New York. Uh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, nah, man. Uh, these, these are actually from Egypt. Right? They're, they're, they're prayer beads, like they're Muslim prayer beads. These, these I got in Cairo, actually. They just sort of like, they're made for, like, from these coconut shells, and the Egyptians have these beads. They're really, they, they're, you, is anyone, any, any Egyptians here? Dude, are you from Egypt? Dude. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on, let me see that. <laughs> I, I was there in Ramadan last in April, and uh, and I got these at like two in the morning in Ramadan. Cause shit, you want to go? The time to go to a Muslim country is in Ramadan, man. Cause in in Ramadan, it, Ramadan, it's like the, it's just the time, man. Like it's just I, I was two in the. I got my hair cut at two in the morning. In Cairo, because I'm walking down, because everything's happening. People are out with their kids. People are out two, three in the morning. Families are out. Everyone's doing it. Because, you know, you fast all day long, and then you got all night to, to, to do life, and then you got to, like, kick it in again, you know, because it's really hot, and you sleep all day, you know, if, if Ramadan falls on that day. Anyway, listen, bro. Um, do, you, do, you, do you recognize these? Yeah. It's like, what, so what's unique about them? Um... I mean, it's just used for prayer. Uh, yeah. I guess, like you can. No, but these, but like the the silver and the. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I mean, um, I mean. That, I've only seen that in Egyptian beads. This is like a style. I don't see that. Usually, like they're white or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen anyone. Yeah, like that, you haven't like seen those, them? dude. They're cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. What's your name, by the way? Mohammed. Yeah. I could have guessed. You know what I mean? Like, I mean. I should have just I should have just called you Mohammed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wait. Are you and you're from? Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Egypt. I mean, where? Uh, Alexandria. Alexandria. Yeah. All right. No. Dude. All right. Make sure you volunteer at some point. I had a dude. I had a kidding. I had a guy in class. Uh, <laughs> his name. His his name was Mohammed. 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 And I'm like, how do you do that? Like how? First of all, why do you do that? And how do you do that? You know, how do you get to Muhammad, 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 man? Dude, where are you from, bro? San Diego. San Diego? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, wait. Like it or no? No, I like it, man. Wait, hey, so wait, how's your family? Here, hold the mic. How's your family doing with the hurricane that came through? Did you guys get oh, hammered? Oh, treacherous storm. A lot of, lot of crazy stuff there? going on over there. Thankfully, no. Yeah. No, I, I, I made it out just into, fl I fled just in time. Yeah. We came here. Yeah. What's your ancestry? Ancestry, Italian and Persian. Italian and Persian? Oh, dude. Yeah. All right. Awesome, man. It's good. Yeah, it's that's good. good. That's a nice mix, man. What about yourself? Great food. I'm like, uh, what do you think? Look at me. I don't know. It's just like some like Polish or something, uh, something German. German. I got a little, tiny bit a of little German. German. A little German. Are you into of, my ancestry? I, I have like a, a lot of Irish and up from the Scottish Isles. So Irish, Scottish, UK. Where's your Where's your shirt from? I, I, I've never seen it. It's Dude, very unique with the It's with cool, the right? You like it? It's from Korea, actually, from Seoul. See, look, your whole outfit, you got something from everywhere in the Dude, world. Dude, I'm, I'm telling The shoes are from Colombia. Yeah, they're definitely from Dude, Seoul. Dude, my underwear? Crazy. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's from Colombia. That's from another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Awesome, dude. By the way, Italian. Who's who's Italian, Persian? You're Italian. My mom's Persian. Ah, oh, did she? Is she a good cook? Yes. My dad is. is actually he a does a good cook too. Man, Persian. Yeah, listen, man. A Persian food, it, it like in food from Iran, like saffron ice cream, bro. Amazing food. Iranian food. The, the only food that's better than Iranian food is Afghan food, in my humble opinion. But, uh, uh, it's just kind of Persian food anyway. Man. Uh, all right, hang on. Where were we? Oh, that. Did you get your answer, bro, to the question? You got your answer to the question? Oh, yeah. All right. Later in the semester, I'll tell you how I converted to Islam. Yeah, by accident, right? <laughs> it's a really good story. I'm still Muslim because, like, Muslims, when, it's like Christians. You know, once you, once Christians, once Jesus claims your your soul, 
You know what I mean? Can you not be a Christian at some point once you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Does he ever leave? Like, he's always there, right? So you can't, like, give it up. You just sort of go, well, Muslims, it's the same thing, right? So uh, anyway, yeah, and I'm like one-tenth of one percent Jewish, by the way. Yeah, yeah, for the Jews. Uh, I was, uh, no, my mom, because I was her fourth kid, her fifth kid, and by that time, she got tired of naming them ahead of time, so I came out. The doctor whose name was Shmuel Zucker, right? Shmuel is Samuel in Hebrew. And he says, what are you calling him? And she says, I'm going to call him Shmuel, right? Samuel. So she named me after this guy. So she always said like, yeah, you've got a little bit of Jew. Uh, you got a little Jewishness in you. So I'm like, all right, I'll take that. People of the book, man. You know, so uh, I got it all, bro. Just Spanish. I swore I was trying to learn Korean. I got like, uh, it's hard, man. I worked on, I got really busy this summer and I couldn't do it, but I'm going to learn some more Korean. Yeah. Yeah. Anyaraseo. I got that. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Wait, where are we? All right, next slide. Uh, are, we, are we good? We're on? All right. <laughs> Uh, all right, attendance, man. Listen, attend. Oh, man. Hey, L Leah, can you? Wait, do you have another question? Wait, how does Sam have an auditorium almost full of students in the UK? Our university only has 77% 70, 70 of the target reached in terms of recruitment. Ah, oh, dude. You know, wait, who's that? Can you, can you also take, take that up to the person as a question? Over, she has a question back. Hazia, uh, the answer to your question is, well, Penn State, first off, at this campus, we have, I don't know, like 34,000 or something undergrads. And across the entire Commonwealth, we have like 100,000 students at the Penn, in the Penn State system. Um, so therefore, people come here because you got to fill the seats. So that's how we have a, an auditorium. So you're, you were writing from the UK. So like, yes, question. Yeah, just push that up. You said you lived in Ecuador. Where in Ecuador did you live? Cuenca. The whole time you were there? No, nah, I mean, I spent time in, in Quito, but most, but most of my time was in Cuenca. And once you left, did you ever go back? Yes. I've been back, and 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 I have an apartment in 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 Bogota in Colombia, so I go back to Colombia a lot. Are you from Ecuador? Yes. Donde? Quito. A Quito. Uh, you just had elections, which were pretty awesome. Yeah. Actually, we're talk to me. We're waiting for the second round. Like yeah. the first round was better than what we thought, but we're waiting for the second round. Yeah. Uh, mucha suerte en este sentido. Sí, es muy difícil ahora. Talk to me sometime, though, after class, all right? I have some questions about Ecuador. Hey, so listen, attendance um, is an assignment, okay? So, the, and here's what this means. You never, ever have to send us a note saying you can't be in class, I won't be in class, here's my doctor's excuse, here's whatever it is. It's like there, there's, you never, ever have to do that because if you're not in class and there's going to be an attendance sheet that goes around, not today, um, if you're not in class, then you have to watch the recording and write up a short essay. 750 words. That's a lot. And, and we check it really carefully. You're not going to be able to use AI and chat GPT and all that kind of stuff. You're just not. Like, we're going to, we're, we're really on point with that. So uh, you, you have to come. It's like part of this. You don't have to take notes or any. There's not a lot of work in this class. And it's not difficult to get an A in the class, but you have to jump through the hoops. And it's not that difficult to jump through the hoops, but we set it up so that you have to jump through them. You have to do what you want to do and if, what we want you to do. And if you do it, then you'll be okay. You'll do well. Half of you will end up with A's. Another 15% will get A minuses. 
And then, you know, you, it's, it's built, it's, we, we design the class that if you want to get a really good grade, you will, okay? But attendance is key. Like you, we, and we start knocking points off, and you go from an 100% in this class down, you drop down pretty quickly to an A minus territory, like really fast. So you, you just have to come. All right, man. So it's an assignment. Okay, we'll say more about that. You'll read the syllabus. All right. Yeah. Uh, what, what else do we have? Oh, so, okay. So you've seen reading the syllabus. So there is a syllabus. It's really long. It's like 20 pages long. I swear it just is. It's what it is. Everything is in there you need to know. But there's an, a syllabus quiz on Canvas. We haven't opened it yet because we haven't. I have to go through and edit the the, uh, the, the, the the. We have to edit it. It will probably open it by Friday morning. Okay. Um, it's worth eight points. You can take it as many times as you want. We want you to get 100% on this quiz. So just keep taking it till you get 100%, okay? And that means that you have the answers to the questions that we need for you to have. No, we don't. We don't care if you have them. C's earn degrees, my friends. Just, just do whatever you want to do. All right, what, what else do we have? Uh, okay, so we do... So we, we, so we live stream the class, okay? We're live streaming right now. Hey, can you, can you pull up the stream? Do you like, you, you, probably, oh, you probably can't pull it up. Yeah. All right, that's all right. We'll pull it up at some point. Anyway, the stream, you know, we're rolling right now. People are watching. Well, Isaiah would just, or what, I forget. Oh, sorry, I forget your name. Just wrote in from the UK. So people watch, right? Um, you know, uh, you, you, you know, you, you can, anybody can watch, right, if your parents want to. Like, we often have parents or, like, grandparents really seem to enjoy it. And then they keep track of their grandkids. Uh, so I had a grandmother watching a class last fall. And she emails me. And I'm like, hey, listen, man, where's your, what's your granddaughter's name and where she sit? So she's, like, kind of, I found out where she sat. And then I'm like, hey, man. Every day, I'll tell the camera operators to zoom in on her so that you can see her, make sure she's in class. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the stream is, is, uh, is uh, oh, yeah, all right, there we are. There's our class. That's the class website. And see, there we are streaming, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, just know that uh, that's happening. Okay, it's cool. Um, all right, what, what, else, what else do we have? Anything else? Oh, yeah. All right, so listen. Um, we're going to do, let's do a case. Let's, let's do a case study. Let's have, let's have some. So I have the idea that my job is to just get you to think about things, okay? I can't tell you what to think. Dude, like, listen, man. Let me see your phone. Do, do, any, anything that you, anything you need to know, th this thing, this is amazing, right? If you want to know, like, hey, what's the percentage of white people in the state of Pennsylvania? Or, like, wh how, do, how do you define white people? Whatever. Just look it up right here, man. I'm not going to do that for you. Like, why would you, why would you pay money to Penn State to have me come up with a list of things that I think you need to know, pull them off of here, put them on a PowerPoint slide, put them up there, and then read them to you, and then have you write them down or type them out. Like, that is the a definition of insanity and corruption if I've ever imagined what it could possibly be. Like, it's just stealing your money. You know, that's absurd. So my job is, is none of that. If you can look it up on your phone, Look it up on your phone. Like, if you have a question, like, oh, sometimes we, oh, I wish Sam would talk about something, would define race. I'm like, stick it into the Google, as George Bush called it. Stick it in the Google, and you'll have, like, 15,000 page hits, and you can read to your heart's content for the next year about how to define race. But don't pay money to Penn State to have me give you my definition of race. Like, that's absurd. So my job, as far as I can assess, is to do things in the classroom that will get you to say, 
or give you the opportunity to say, hey, I, I never thought about that. Or like, but, and what we're going to do is have other people talk. Like You all are going to talk, and I'm going to ask you questions, and then once in a while I'll say something. But mostly the things that I say are not very interesting. So, but things that other people say, because this is what happens. You all want to hear from other students. People who watch the stream, they don't watch the stream to listen to me. Nobody watches the stream because they're interested in anything that I have to say. They watch the stream because they want to know what you have to say. And, and especially people who have this idea that they're really curious about what college students are thinking. And you all are college students, presumably, and then people are really, really curious. And I'm curious. And so anyway, that's how the class operates. Um, okay, so listen, we're going to, we need, we're going to do, we're going to, so we do this thing with volunteers. Now what, what happens is, can you go to the next slide really fast? Um, we're, don't do this right now. We're, we'll, I'll pull it up. But what you, what you do is you go here and you volunteer. And then you, in the process of doing so, you give us permission to use your likeness and your footage and stuff. All right, you can go back. Um, but, uh, and then before class, what happens is I, we, the team here, Leah and I, will reach out to you. And I'll introduce everybody next, uh, next class, right? We reach out to you and say, hey, do you want to volunteer today? And you'll say, what's it about? And we'll say, we're not telling you. Because that's not what it is. You just know that the point is never, ever, ever, ever to make somebody look foolish or to create gotcha moments. Because like the worst thing ever for me, for this class, for you and for me, is when somebody is somehow embarrassed when they come up here. So we set it up so you're, you're not going to be embarrassed. Like you don't, it's not gotcha. Because, you know, you watch this reality TV stuff and it's like, oh, let's point out the racist. You know, it's like, no, nah, we're not doing that stuff, man. That's, first off, that's old. It's uninteresting. And it's not intellectually curious. So we don't do that. But what we do is um, just have really, what I think are really kind of interesting conversations. We'll discover stuff together, okay? So look, um, wait, where's my person? Okay, so we're gonna get we're we're gonna do we're gonna do some volunteers today. I already picked out a couple before a couple people before class, and but you you will volunteer by going to this website, and then those of you who want to, and then we'll we'll I'll, we'll reach out to you. Okay, but today I'm gonna give you a sample of the kinds of stuff that we're gonna do. So wait, okay, so are you ready? See, who's you're gonna do it? Oh man, okay, wait, and where's where's Day Young? Are you, are you on? Which, who wants to, which one of you want to do it? You want to do it? You want to do it? No, only one. Only one. Was he, the next one, of, another, somebody else can do it next time. You want to do it? It's good. Come on, you got a cool coach bag, man. You do it. All right. And then I need, you can, yeah, you can sit right. One, we, we're going to go in the back room, actually, in a second. So first. And then what we'd like to have, not need, but what I'd like to have is an American who, um, you know, I wonder if we should do, a, a, since we have two women, I, I think maybe we should just have a woman who has a little, who's maybe did a study abroad at some point. Is there anyone who did a study abroad? No, someone who already went or who spent like, no, but that's good. You're going to, you, somebody who already went Maybe like spent three months somewhere. I don't know, like Italy or something. Yeah. Okay. How about you? Behind the camera op. All right. Awesome. Man. And you're white, so it's good. It's good if it's a white person. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So listen, I'm not going to introduce. Well, hang on. Let's let's do that. Leah, do you have the or do you have a mic? Just one. Yeah, but over here. Not I don't want to wait, come stand out here though. So usually what happens is we arrange so you so it's not awkward. So you know, we usually like the volunteers will bring people up before class and you sit on the desk or whatever. We set it up somehow so that you're so it's not really awkward in a way, but always we want to be out front. So anyway, just say say your name and, and where you're from and 
Yeah, yeah, okay. hold the mic. And Anne, here's the next thing. Yeah, hold the mic close. Okay. My name's Reem. Um, Reem? Yeah. My name's Reem, and I'm from the United Arab Emirates. That's the UAE, by the way. Yeah. UAE. She's Emirati. All right. Did everyone hear her? Oh, God, I'm, man. I have, just so you know, I, I wear an earpiece because from playing the drums and hitting cymbal. Are there any drummers in here, by the way? Dude, do you have ear damage at all? Any of you guys have any ear damage? Uh, wait till you get to be mine. <laughs> Wear ear protection. Yeah, I have tinnitus so bad that, like, I have an orchestra playing in my ear at all times. Okay, so Reem. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Jayen, and I'm from South Korea. Wait, what's your name? Jayen. Jayen? Yeah. Ah, Jayen. I'm not Diane. <laughs> uh, awesome, mom. And you are from? South Korea. Where in, where? in Seoul? Seoul, yeah. Yeah. And you're here and as an exchange student, right? Yeah. Awesome. For one semester. One semester. And what, Reem, what year are you? Sophomore? Okay. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm from New Jersey. Lauren from New Jersey. No, that's okay. Jersey is a, it's a really, Jersey is a really foreign place. Trust me. It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Where in Jersey? Uh, like central Jersey, like Southampton, Burlington South County. Yeah. Okay. I was I lived in New Brunswick. So okay, so here's what's gonna happen. Nish. By the way, this is this is Darnisha who you'll should wait. Should I just introduce you now? I should introduce you now. This is Darnisha. Darnisha runs the stream. She I she's I have two bosses in my life. My wife and Darnisha. Darnisha runs the stream. Keeps things in going. Yeah, you guys are gonna see me running in and out of the back. Um I'm Darnisha Nish. Um, I've been working with Sam for, I think, about five. Take longer than is good for your health. Exactly. <laughs> um, I've been working with Sam for longer than I should have been. <laughs> um, I also work with World in Conversation, which you guys will hear about at some point in the next couple weeks. Um, I run the stream in the back. You're going to see me running back and forth a lot. Um, if you guys ever have a question before or after class, you can usually come find me. I'm a little bit rushed, but I'll answer your question. Better after class. It's better for after class. <laughs> okay, so can you, or, or, or uh, I'm going to head back in the back anyway, so I'll take them. Yeah. Back there, all right. Okay, follow a niche. And then you, you'll come out, we'll, you'll come out one at a time. Okay, so listen, now I need some more, I, uh, we got some more volunteers. All right, so dude. Okay, man. Long haired dude. You're you're on. And uh wait. And the one of the women from Oh yeah, it's for you, right? Okay. From and Okay, so here's is there anybody from you can go in the front. Just so you guys just hang out on the front. Is there anybody here who's European, like from Europe? Like, like you're, you, like you really rolled in from, dude, from Europe? Where are you from? They're all pointing to you. Is it just, wait, where are you from, bro? You were born in Rome? Do you live there now? When's the last time you lived there? A couple years ago? Yeah, you, okay. So you're Roman in a way. Dude, a Roman. Christians, this, there's a Roman right there, man. All right. Anybody else? Wait, hang on. What's your name, bro? Chris? I thought you would say like Luigi or something, you know? Bro, where are you from? From Greece? And you're, you live there now? Yeah, okay, dude, okay. Bro, we're going to use him, all right? All right, come, come on up. All right. And, and, who, and, and who is uh, it's someone who's Latino or Hispanic? Latino, Latina. Where are you from, bro? Wait, are, are you from? Not, not, you're, you're an international student? Oh, dude, okay. We'll go with you. All right. Where are you from? Panama? Okay, awesome. You can go in the front. Okay, so now here's what we need. We need, we're going to do this thing. So someone, someone who's, Air, okay, so bro, wait, were you, you're, are you, did you say you were Saudi or Emirati? Saudi? You can tell by his, the hat. It's not his hat, it's his friend's hat. All right. 
I'm going to introduce you guys in a second, but I need, okay, so someone who's Arab, who's Haliji, but, but in the U.S., like, but is American, like, really, you're totally American? Oh, dude, you're, okay, you're on, man. Yeah, all right. And then, uh, is there anybody who's Greek in, but American, like Greek American by chance? Dude, she, yo, are you Greek American? Really? No, you just, you just have to like be, is, no, is she really? Come on, you want to do it? Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's awesome. I know that we're pushing me, but you don't have to do anything. You just have to, you know, all right. Uh, wait, anybody, any, okay, so anybody, any Afro-Caribbeans, any, yeah, where are you, where's your, but so you're, but you're, wait, hang on though, but are you American? Yeah, like really American, like McDonald's American? All right, okay, okay, come, yeah, awesome. Wait, so is that like one, two, wait, and then we have, okay, and then someone who's uh, East Asian, but, um, but American, like totally, totally American. Dude, all right, hang on, hang on. Let me, the, okay, uh, yeah, all right, no, no, hang on, nah, I don't want to do, let's go with you, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, here's what's up. Leah, can you get the, give everyone microphones? Get the mics? Oh, they are? Okay. Can you, Leah, just, just give, give them. No, no, no. They're here. Right here. No, just, just you're. So here's what we're going to do, right? This is just like a, so I have this idea. This is especially a thing with here, like snarky Americans and like snarky against like white people. Because we're always, white people are really easy to make fun of. Well, hang on. White people, people make fun of white people a lot, right? I mean, you're, you're white, right? You look Greek, by the way. Are you, yeah, all right. Uh, anyway, we, we don't make fun of white people in this class, not just because I'm white, but because it's like, come on, man. Like, it's just, it's just not cool. It doesn't get us anywhere, okay? But there's this idea that either, A, white people don't know anything, so people of color automatically get these passes because it's like, yeah, because you, you know, because you must know, because we, we white people in particular, because we don't want to be identified as racist or seen as racist. So we defer to black and brown people all the time. It's just this thing, because the worst thing in the world is to be seen as racist or ignorant or dumb or not knowing, whatever. And we're all, people don't know. And if you think that it's only white people that don't know about these things. It's because you haven't spent time around black and brown people to find out that they don't know anything either, right? Except the things, the, 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 the little bit that they know about these things, these matters. And it's just like, okay, we're all in the same boat because there's so much to know and so much to learn about other cu cultures that it's really incredibly difficult, right? So anyway... That's the first thing. The second thing is Americans are seen as really ignorant, that we don't understand. So here's what we're going to do. You, okay, so we're going to have, hang on, you have, to, you have to stand next to her. And bro, you stand next to her. Uh, and you're, yeah, you're going to be next to your, no, yeah, you got to be next to your Greek counterpart there. All right. Yeah, you can just hold that for a second. So here's what we're going to do. So we have like an international student. We have an American. We have international. We have American international. Okay. And so these are, so we're going to bring, we're going to bring everybody out one at a time and see if they can guess which one's an American and which one is international. Okay. Just a little context. And we're going to see if I'm rooting for the white woman, by the way, but whatever. I'm rooting, well, you know, it's like the Olympics. I'm rooting for the Americans because, you know, whatever. So anyway, just say your name and like, you know, 
Yeah, I don't know, whatever. I, say, say your name. Okay, what's your ancestry? And like, what year are you? What's your major? We'll do uh, that. My name's Alan. I'm a sophomore. And my ancestry, my dad's uh, from Panama. Yeah. Uh, Jamaican ancestry, Ethiopian. And my mom is just Panamanian mixed with some Spanish or something like that. Spanish or Spanish. something like yeah, that. Yeah, we don't know. Right. This, is how, this is how Panamanians roll. Yeah, Spanish or, you know, something like that. Actually, uh, we do. Yeah. yeah, you do, man. Yeah, You're very people. chill about that stuff. All right. Yo, I'm Izzy. Uh, I'm Dominican. And uh, I'm from New York. That's it. <laughs> Dude, totally. Wait, what was your name again? Dude, Izzy, you're, no, no, Izzy, you're like, cool, just cool. Like New York cool. Not that you're not cool, bro. You're all right. You know what I mean? But not like, you're not like Izzy, you know? You might be, actually. But all right, what was your name again? Alan. Alan. Izzy. Uh, my name's Andrew. I'm a sophomore, and my family is very Chinese. Okay, got Han, you. Han Chinese. Han Chinese. Okay, awesome. Uh, where are you from? Where's, where are you from in here in the U.S.? New York. New York? Okay. Another New York. Uh, so my name is Waylon. Uh, I'm a junior. Um, I'm from China. Do you speak any Mandarin, bro? Yes, uh, I speak Mandarin and Cantonese. No, you do. Yeah, do. Mandarin and Cantonese? Yes. Yeah? Uh, Wait, hang on, hang on. How's his Chinese? How's his Mandarin? Uh, um, not bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Dude, you got a not bad. All right. Straight from the mainland. All right. <laughs> All right, bro. All right, go ahead, man. Um, my name is Muhammad, and I'm Wait, from... Wait, what's your name? Muhammad. Muhammad. Yeah. All right. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Uh, trust me. You just go with Muhammad. All right, go ahead. Yeah, too many, too many of us. Yeah. Um, no, no, there's not enough, actually, but that's yeah. all good. <laughs> I'm, my parents are from Saudi Arabia, both of them, and... Um, I'm doing petroleum engineering, adding more to the stereotype. Yeah. Dude, and what's with the hair, man? Um, I don't know. I like long hair. Dude, I like long hair, as you yeah. can see. But <laughs> I'm a, I don't see a lot of long hair. Long, the, as my mother used to say, the long hairs. The long hairs. Are there, how many? Do you, is it, com, is it, I don't see many pe, not, men with long hair coming out of. It's not common now, but like if you look. Hold it close. Uh, it's not common now, but if you look back at history, like a hundred years ago, totally, dude. Yeah, with, with my ethnicity, it's very common. Then. Yeah, cool, yeah. awesome, man. Okay, go ahead. I'm Nathan. Uh, yep, you're good. Wait, no, hang on. There you are. Dude, electrical engineering, my friend. That's all right, but you're American, so we're good. If you were Saudi, you'd have that shit down. But okay. Anyway, my name is not Mohammed. Um, Nathan. But, yeah. All right. Um, Jordanian by descent. All right. Um, my mom's from Amman, if anyone's curious. And what was the rest of the prompt? That's good enough. That's All, right. Okay. All right, Nathan. All right. My name's Irini. Um, Wait, what is it? Irini or okay. Irini or whatever. Okay. Um, I mean, both my parents are from Greece. My mom was born there. Um, but I'm from PA, so. From PA? Have you been to Greece? Yeah, multiple times. Oh, cool. Awesome. Man. Awesome. Where are they from in Greece, by the way? Um, my mom's from like this little town. It's called Almiro. It's like three hours from Athens. And then my dad's from Chios. It's an island close to yeah. Turkey. Awesome. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Christophoros. I'm from Greece. I'm an international student. Um, I'm here to study finance at SMIL. I'm a sophomore and I'm... I guess, fully Greek, you know, from Greece. Uh, it's dope to be here, and thank you for putting me on the stage. Dude, you're on, man. You're welcome. All right. Who wants to go? How about you come first? Huh? Yeah. It's, it's fun. You're going to have fun back there. They're all... Okay, here we go. Wait. Uh, we need them. Okay, so what, so remind us of your name. My name's Reem. Reem. Okay, so Reem, here's the deal. So come come here. Uh, who? So you turn around. So one. So the so you have these two people here are from the same background. 
these two from the same, not back, not exact country, but you know, these two people and these people. But one's an American. One shares the ancestry mostly with the other. And one's American and one's an international student studying here. So, so what I want you to do, hang on. We're going to hang on. This is, we're going to do this. Why don't, you, why don't you guys come out too? Yeah, yeah, both of you come. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to, because I don't want to run out of time. So we need all three. Uh, Leah, we need all three mics over here. Oh, wait, I got them. Thanks. So can you, you all, so here's what's up. So you come around here. So these, these two people, one, one is an American and one is from the motherland, wherever the motherland is. One's an American, one's from the motherland. One's American, one's from, not, not the mother, not, a, not exactly a country, but at least a country nearby, okay? And same with these two folks here. So what I want the three of you to do, this is a contest. You have to look at them and figure out which one is the American. And then we want to know why. So you can walk down here, like, look, you know, check them out. So your job is to just take a walk down the, you know, want to see the, the so. It's a staring contest. So come on, no, get, Come, come all the way down here and like look at everybody. You got to make your decision before we. You can't change your minds. Hmm. Who? So the goal. So the thing you want to know: who's the American and who's the yeah. international student? All right. So, are you ready? Do you know? Do you have your people picked? So it's these two go together. These two. These two. And these two. Now you all, the two of you, are competing against the American. Right? And, you know, Americans, we rule the world in lots of ways. But, but, the, but the bias against Americans is that we're really ignorant about the rest of the world. So, like, you're not expected to get any of these right because you're an American. But, you know, you, you are both these international people. And so the, media, we, the moment that we think international, we think, oh, they're, like, educated about the whole world and they know everything. So we're rooting on you to win, Okay on behalf of the American populace. All right, so are you guys ready? Yeah. Guys, by the way, so for the two of you, we say, no, 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 you're, you're competing against them. Just so the two of you know, we often say guys, even your three women, but we'll often just use guys. I don't do it a lot, but sometimes I do. So it's just a thing, you get it. All right, so you all know who's, who's the American? She's the American? Yeah. Who do you think? He is? Um, it's him also? Okay. All right. Hang on. All right. Should we t t tell it? One, one, wait, you're Emirati or Saudi? Yeah. One for the Emiratis. Yeah, she's the American. All right. Dude, broke. Kaliji power right there, man. All right. These two right here. Bro, turn your hat around a sec. Let me see what, let me, let's us, let us see what it says. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Which one's the American? Wait. Him. This guy is? Who's the American? This guy? Say him. This guy is? Dude, Korean power. All right. Dude. You, like, don't even know your own people. You know what I mean? Yeah, look at this guy. Okay. His, in fact, not only is he Arab, but his name's Muhammad, right? This guy's name is Nathan, you know? It's like, yeah. Oh, what's your last name? Rahani. All right. He's Jordanian. But so he's Jordanian. He's not really Arab, you know? I'm just kidding, bro. I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> Jordanians, that was a joke. All right. Okay, so now we have these these two here. Now you're Korean. It's Korean. You better, you, well, you should. Maybe you just got here, so you, we wouldn't expect you to know. Okay, what do you, what do you, you know your answer? American. This guy's the American? Yes. That's what I'd say. You think it's this guy? What do you think? Yeah. Wait, why do you think it's him, by the way? Because... 
Her pants mm-hmm. are yeah. very, no, her pants are very, like, Asian. Dude, <laughs> Wesley, can you get a shot of her pants? Come over here a little bit. What makes them Asian? Because they look like yours? Yeah, it's the style. It's the style. I'm looking mostly at the fashion. Okay. Yeah. And based on her fashion, she looks like she's Asian. Mm-hmm. All right, hold it close. Well, go ahead. Wait, what was funny? Did I miss something? All right, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, look at his legs, though. But hang on. Can you stand stand over here? Wesley, get her pants also. Yeah, you can see that. It's like, wait, put 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 yellow up on the screen, by the way, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, you really see that. Yeah, you're killing it. Okay, wait. So you said, you all three said him? Dude, okay. Wait, are we good? No, all right. Okay. All right. He's American. Yeah. But, okay, so we're still, all right. You're, the two of you are, okay, you're tied. That was the tiebreaker. All right, where are we, who's, who's the American? Reem, this is going to be hard for you. Joan, maybe, maybe it, for you, who do you, Joan, who do you think? Yeah, go first. Look in the microphone. It's a tough one. Yeah. Him. You think he's the American? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right, go ahead. I think she's the American. You think she's the American? Uh huh. I think he's American. He's the American? Yeah. Yeah. What makes you, what, let me, Jan, what makes you think, wait, you said him? Um, he looks so calm. I think he's like acting. <laughs> yeah, he's like she's, acting. She's, uh, yeah, as real, opposed though. to her with the shield. She's like kind of, it's kind of stereotype, but can I say it? <laughs> you but can say it. She looks like American style. American style? Yeah. What's the American style about her? Um, like on, like the pants, waist. Oh, the pants, yeah, waist. Yeah, and yeah but like I see that. She, she wearing the Jordan. Oh, yeah. the Jordan. <laughs> but People it's like, are right. It looks cool. Okay, wait. Yeah. So he's, wait, you, but you said he's the American? Oh, yeah. He's the American. I thought that he was like, he looks so calm. So I think he was like acting. He was acting. Like, oh, okay. I don't know. What do you think? Who you said he's the American? Why? Yeah. What do you say? So, so this is really interesting, right? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Just, Hold the mic close. He looks American. Yeah. I'm just basing everything off the style. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. It's right. Hey, by the way. Uh, with, this isn't really interesting. So, um, black people and black Americans, and in the dialogue in the United States today is that like black Americans feel like, like when, or P- Americans feel like when you go abroad, that international people look here at us and they see Americans as white people, right? That if you're white, you're you identify as an American. But when you travel. And when you travel with black people and black Americans, you you see that like no man it ain't about it's not about race. It's about how you how you dress and how you the rest of the world sees the multiculturalism here. So it doesn't. Well, okay, so you said. I think she's American. She's American. What makes you think she's American? Uh, her style is very similar to someone I know. Yeah. Like literally, like same necklace and like everything. So. Yeah. All right. So she is in fact American. So it was a. So it was a tie. You each got you each got two. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. So you kill it. So the Americans, so this is good. This is a nice outcome. So let me ask you a question really fast. Can you now turn around to the class? Can you how is it volunteering up here? Because I we I want as many people to fill out the volunteer form as possible. Like, were you really nervous? Were you like how was it for you to volunteer? I was nervous and it's a little awkward, but it's fine. It's chill. It's good? Yeah. Volunteer. Volunteer? Yeah. So how about for you? I also awkward, but it's kind of good experience for me. 
Yeah, it's good to be up in front of this many yeah. people, right? And how about for you? Same thing? Uh, same. It's super chill. I got in my head way too much about it. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. Hey, so listen. Hey, and, th and for you all, thanks, man. I really I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks. Dr. Wagner says hi, by the way. Dr. Wagner says hi. Awesome, man. Thanks. Hey, by the way, wait. That. No, no, no. So, this is new. Oh, dude, awesome, man. All right. Hey, listen, everybody. Hey, thanks. So, we'll see you on, we'll see you on Thursday. Thanks for clapping for the volunteers.